pues ya pues ahora vamos a ver un poco Hello, uh, welcome to Zimbabwe uh, Welcome to Weza Welcome to Mashonan East uh, part of uh, Zimbabwe We are here in rural Weza and uh, we are trying to look at what the rural communities are doing here and uh, whether they are really moving with the times or they're just really struggling. What I'm seeing here is exciting. And this is the future of our rural uh, homes and our, our rural production. So what you're seeing here is an early crop of potatoes that is already starting to, to grow. It's just been done uh, a week ago and it's starting to show signs of uh, growing and germinating. So come, come with me, come, I'll show you. I'll just give a quick tour and um, what, what they are realizing from here is quite, quite interesting. You probably know the cost of living now and you probably know the cost of fertilizer is high. But what they are using, alternatively, they are using manure from leaves. So they go out in the forest and they get leaves that are dropped by trees. So how important is it to grow trees? Look at how they are, they are actually surviving using uh, fertilizer or manure from falling leaves. And then they bring them here and then they use them to grow their crops. So the cost of uh, fertilizer is not affecting them. So on this side, we see sweet potatoes. This is an early crop. The rain season has just started this week and most people haven't grown anything, but already look, they are already ahead of time. And this is sweet potatoes. Look, this is an early crop of tomatoes. This is an early crop of tomatoes. All grown, they don't need fertilizer, they're using leaves as manure and to grow. Uh, you can see all of all the leaves there, and they're using them to grow tomatoes. And um, this is what we are doing now. And I'm quite excited. And you're quite excited. So you can see it's a variety of crop. They do what you call crop rotation. They actually know that. The rural communities here in rural ways that they know how to do crop rotation. So here is sweet mel uh, sweet melons, already at an advanced stage. That's sweet melons on this section. So he's able. To, you're gonna get maybe a ton on this side, and um, so it's ma it's about managing risk. So if the watermelons don't grow, you you come to butternuts. Come look, these are butternuts already starting to show good signs. These are butternuts. These are butternuts. So, we have, they have a good market. That's the main, the main big thing. But uh, they're the moving ahead of time. The cost of living is high in America. The cost of living in Europe. Uh, but here they have plenty. They want to supply Europe. They want to supply America. They want to feed America. Usually, it's the opposite. They want to say, uh, they want to feed uh, aid for Africa. Or want, want to feed Africa. They're starving. They want to feed, they want markets to feed Europe. They want markets to feed uh, America with the butternuts. Yeah. So you can see, look at that. Yeah? Look at that. So that's the crop, the, the maize crop is already up in an advanced stage. So this is not the, the rain season. The one, they will take this off and then put another crop again. So throughout the year, they're not resting. And now I'm gonna show you quickly, um, I'll show you something else. They're doing very well on, come, come over this side. You could, kneel the, you could kneel down for me here so that we have a look at uh, what we are looking at. So, what we are trying to do with the rural communities, we want to try and move rural communities from subsistence farming to uh, crop, uh, from uh, sort of uh, commercial farming in the rural areas. Not resettlement farmers, but rural Zimbabwe. So, what we, are, what we are doing is we're introducing crops that they've not seen before. These are what we call cashew nuts. We are experimenting on them and we want to be able to supply Europe and, and America in cashew nuts. So out of these, they want to try and aim to get at least to about five hectares of cashew nuts. And, um, and um, yeah, and they're doing very well. We've grown these from seeds and we've shown them how to grow them and they're doing just that. And they're going, they're, they look quite healthy. Yeah. So when you see uh, cashew, uh, one day when you see cashew plants from rural Zimbabwe, you know that they've been grown from seed and this is all to do with knowledge 
transfer and skills transfer and um, they have a knowledge that uh, in America and in the Europe in the Western world they're struggling on food and they want to feed they're getting ready to feed America and feed uh, Europe in every every corner and um, they're trying on also on pistachios if pistachios do well they, 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 they also concentrate on that. This is rural Zimbabwe. So it's moving with the times, knowing where the problem is, and they're focusing on that. And we, we, we hope that is the way to, to go forward. Let's, let's see what else they're doing. So you, you can see, they are, they are butternuts. This is necessary. This is uh, tomatoes, I think. That's tomatoes getting ready to be replanted at some point. But um, this is a uh, winter crop. Usually the, uh, the rural community will be resting, they are waiting for the rains. They don't wait for the rains, they are growing throughout the year. So let's, let's see again. So they look. So the source of water from there, so they use that from the rivers. So it's not, there is, it's not technical, there is no any investment in boreholes, there is nothing like that. It's uh, using what they have already. They've got a river that doesn't dry, but all along they've been waiting for the rains and the water is flowing away. away. So we, we invest in, in things that, um, that help them and then they, they thrive. Now they're looking for a market. They want to penetrate into America, and into, into Europe. They're starting to experiment to see how they can do with the cashews, pistachios. You know, they want to be the biggest uh, suppliers of nuts from rural Wedza. So there we are. Yeah, we are going to get there. It happens. So, and you, you can see the, the early crop as well for um it's already showing science this is um th this is a uh, sweet potatoes that's sweet potatoes so you can take let's take a shortcut from here so you can see it's a it's it's um when you introduce skills and knowledge to the rural communities they do very well and they copy and they accept knowledge and uh no one else is uh, would say, oh, I have enough knowledge. We also continuously learn as we go by. As you go, they have enough fruits, they've got peaches, they're eating as they go. So they're self-sufficient. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, um, it's something that when they're nest ready, <clears throat> the tomatoes, different stages. They've got beans. So in terms of protein, they've got beans there, they've got vegetables, some tomatoes in different stages. different stages. You've got avocados, you can see already the avocados there, and they've got oranges that are already uh, showing signs. Avocados, oranges, and um, coming down, I will, I will show you again. Let's go through. Mm -hmm. So let's go through this way. Let me go through this way. Come. Avocados, look, they are already good showing ends of avocados. So, and um, look, what have you got? We've got kesho, kesho nuts that we are ready, and some are already uh, in the planting stage. So, and we've got uh, pistachios as well, pistachio seeds, and the uh, avocado necessary there. So, what we are saying in short is. We want to be able to penetrate the international market. We want to be able to, to penetrate the rural community needs to feed America. We need Africa to be feeding America and we want to be feeding uh, uh, the Europe. And it's done in rural, not commercial, but rural Zimbabwe. So that we can, uh, uh, food becomes cheaper. It's no point for them to be losing pistachios and uh, uh, cashew nuts uh, for not having a market. But these are crops that are not usually sold in Zimbabwe. So a market needs to be realized and we need to be having someone knocking and helping the rural communities for them to establish. They even have difficulties getting a data to, to tell them what they are doing. So what we are saying is there has to be an advocate for them who opens a market uh, for these, uh, for these uh, rural communities so that they are able to, to sell what they are producing to, to where they need them. They don't, they don't need cashew nuts here, they don't need uh, pistachio nuts here, but there are sections of the world that will require them. So, 
in short, we are saying we are ready to supply Europe. We are ready to supply uh, um, the Americas uh, for food to become uh, affordable because we have much of it. So if you have an oversupply, the price will come down. So we are saying um, this is the way forward for rural communities to, to move ahead and forge ahead. And um, it, it, it shows that given the opportunities, anyone can do anything. There is nothing that they can't do. And uh, from uh, Wedza, from uh, rural Zimbabwe, uh, my name is Taku. I'm here in Mashonaland East uh, province, part of Zimbabwe. Uh, thank you for listening to my uh, rural content. Thank you.